Edfu Foundation Incorporated utilizes science and the teachings of our ancestors to improve humanity. We want to reunite and uplift our family throughout the planet. Our message or theme for 2021 is Original People United. We work hand in hand with our sister organization, the Conservancy Corp investing in the future of humanity through our programs and advocacy. We seek to move our civilization from its current state to that of a type one civilization on the Carter Jeff civilization scale and beyond in a spiritually holistic way. We stand by the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Durban Declaration and Program of Action and support United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals and Environment Justice. Support Apple Foundation by checking out our page and subscribing. It's the yeah, time. they're looking for content. They need that content. They, they, they want they want that market. market. Yeah, the only thing that's slowing down the content chase is that they have these huge libraries. So if you notice, they're announcing all these shows that people are op optioning, but if it's not one of the names of the studios, it's a production company because then they're trying to develop and then sell it. What, the, what Paramount Plus and Disney Plus and HBO Max, if you notice, they're going through their library and they're trying to get writers to come do the new MacGyver and the new whatever this thing is because they own it and it's their library so they can regenerate their own thing because it's still at the end of the point day, it's about making money. What's, what I've heard lately is that though, one of the things is that a production company, you know, Skylar Productions doing it, or if it's Disney, if it's Disney Plus, it's going to end up on the air. If it's Skylar Productions, then they're going to try and develop it, you know, for a small amount of money and then try and sell it to one of these guys. And that's that's the difference. Yeah, when you hear all these things selling, just look at look for that fine print. You'll know if it's something you're gonna see right away, or if it's something that you might not see for a while. If you don't mind, I would like to ask one or two questions. <laughs> I hear what you're saying, and it's kind of scary, but it's also like I was reading the uh, recent Forbes article from last year where Tyler Perry had finally made that bill, and I I listened to a lot of the interviews that he said where he was like the way that you own and you control you have to make and finance your projects yourself. That's the first thing. Yep. Second thing is, I have a twin brother, identical twin brother. And we worked for four years doing this thing called the Diesel Funk Show, right? And he's got a horror film he's done, he's almost finished. And then we did four seasons worth of programming, right? Mm -hmm. That we're gonna put together. And I thought has been, you know what? Let's put all of our stuff together and then we will try to go get a production deal. Does that make sense or is that foolish? No, so that, that makes great sense. That makes great oh, sense. Oh, okay. And, um, wow. and, and they're looking for what else you can bring and all that type of stuff. The other, the other way in is to do the give and take. Develop one of their things and then after it takes off, then bring out your list. You walk in and do a pitch and they might say, hey, we have these five things in the library. Anything interest you? Go in that meeting, think of that library that they got. Look, you can always look up everybody's library now. And right. if there's something you like, say, uh, take it with you, develop it with you. Say, hey, well, are you doing anything with this project? And then, uh, yeah, hey, I'm interested in that. Um, the name gets power, gets things. So once you get a name, so if you do one of theirs, now you got a name and you get to do one of yours. Or you take in all of yours if you got a bunch of stuff and they're like, hey, we like this stuff. Let's get this on there. Let's get this guy under our wing and see what else we can get out of him or her. All right, so that's, so. that's that second question. If the content is finished, does that apply to what you're saying as well? Absolutely. If it's done and they like it, they can put it on right away. Ah, okay. You know Thank you, sir. Like Thank you. You guys take care. I'm saying all of this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm even know now. You know, put on the suit and tie and everything just for that. You know. <laughs> I know a lot of writer friends that have a lot of great ideas, and they keep getting the studios keep saying well, what name to. They got to make that money back. Listen, Netflix. They're still spending more per year than what they're making for you. As great as they are, and as big as they are, they need to lock down on them passwords because that's more money they could be making. You know what yeah. I mean? So if all of a sudden the bank came in and said, you got to pay right now, to be in trouble. So what do they call that, a loss leader, right? Yeah. They but, got so much property though, that they can, they can always put the brakes on and just cruise for a couple. You think that, but it's a game change. You know, eventually for a while, people were doing what they did with HBO, where they dropped the subscription and pick it back up like Game of Thrones. You know what I mean? HBO, they were doing that. They would drop it and pick it back up. Where Disney Plus has the great advantage of what they're doing 
is that nobody's gonna drop it because every Friday there's a new Marvel show and then, then there'll be a new Star Wars show. So it's really about keeping those subscriptions. But guess what? WandaVision just finished. We got the little documentary this week and then uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier starts next. That's so who's right. dropping That's their right. subscription? Nobody dropping I'm not canceling mine. Exactly. Right, right. I would tell you, I, yeah. I got I got Hulu Hulu for the sole purpose of watching the Wu Tang series, and then as soon as it went off, it was nothing else there for me. Now they come up with the part two, you know, and it just sucked me back in. They want to stop Mook Nito, the anti-villain. <laughs> no, no, no. So I saw it in the byline. We must stop Mook Nito. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard people try to compare it to the black exploitation period, but to me, it feels very different. This is definitely not black exploitation. No. Okay. Everybody's too smart and creative. Um, did you see Lovecraft Country? It was amazing. Yes, I did. Yeah. What was amazing about, to me, with Lovecraft Country is that it was a, it has so many different genres, but it was the perfect melting pot of all the genres. That's what right. I would love to do is ask uh, some white people what they thought of Lovecraft Country first, because for us, it was seeing us as things that we always saw white people do, but we never got to do. But it was many different genres perfectly executed as one, right? So that brings a, that brings a very good question to my mind. And then also I want to give a shout out to Watchmen too. I mean, I think Watchmen was just as wonderful with Regina King. And it's a shame they won't show her in the second season. That brings to mind the question. So Lovecraft Country and Watchmen, right? So a lot of my lesser melanated friends, they were all in on the Watchmen. Right, because the Watchmen has this history behind it, and you know what the Watchmen is. But Lovecraft Country is something that's something new. It looks like it's just a black person's tale, right? And so there's no, to me, there's no problem with that. Like, yo, that was made for our community. We watched it, we supported it, it did very well. If other people outside of us aren't watching these things, how does that impact the the, the success of those shows and the actual social change that can happen as a result of it? I mean, Black is universally accepted and gets nominated for an Emmy every year. Right. So somebody out of Black people got to be watching it, you know? And I think with Love Care Country, what I thought was so brilliant about it is that it for us, it was all the things that we've always wanted to see people of color do but if you made everybody white it's all they've already seen a bazillion different times so I, that's why i said i would love to hear if white people had the same response that black people did to it because i don't think it was anything new for white people but f except for the new part would be seeing black people do this stuff uh but for us it was it was the perfect line of it, it was i mean it was a horror movie it was a mystery it was you know Space, Afrofuturism. You know there were references when she did Raiders of the Lost Ark, but you know, so there was things that it wasn't original, but it was an original spin on it. You know what I mean? There's so many different cultures that are underserved. I use Crazy Rich Asians. It wasn't an original romantic comedy, but it was because it was Asian people in it. That's right. We've seen that story before, but we've never seen Asian people in that story before, which made it fresh and new, and that's what we need more of. So I don't think it's ever going to be black exploitation or Asian exploitation. It's underrepresentation. A lot of us don't even know we wanted, we needed that, that, that we were lacking that, you know, until we saw it. And then we was like, okay, yeah, are we lacking that now? You know what I mean? I remember when Black Panther came out, you know what I mean? That was like a, a moment in history for me, you know, as far as black people with in comics and all that, because it was a time where I actually saw my people embracing it in, in, in such a way, you know what I mean? That, you know, like you say, they, they needed it. They, we need it. Yes, we need that. But we didn't know we needed it until that moment. You know, that's how they institutionalized the race, the subliminal racism. I was saying that you didn't even know you needed to see yourself. Right. You know, exactly. They see themselves all the time. Exactly. But think about whenever you do see yourself doing anything, doesn't it give you confidence? You know, all day. All day. I, I, I'll be honest. I, I, when I was at Ohio State, I was majoring in architecture, just lost walking across campus, probably failing. And it was because I saw a friend of mine carrying a film camera. And I followed him to class and didn't even know they had a film school there and signed up that day because I saw somebody look just like me walking with a film camera. Like that was the eye opener. That was the difference maker. Like white people not knowing that, you know, not knowing, oh. that, you know what I mean? Not having that, okay, I will spend all this money on that to get that without really knowing that, you know what I mean? that lackage that we had. I'll be, I agree with you. I don't think anybody knew it was going to do that big, a billion dollars. I, I didn't. I'll be honest. No, nobody knew I, it was going to do that. But I, I was hoping for 700. No, no. I mean, that it far exceeded its expectation. But I don't know that it still moved, it moved the needle because it's, it's been four years and we haven't had anything else like it. One thing I will say is that there is, you know, there's two types of people 
and it's not racially uh, it's across all racial lines it's just two types of human beings there's those that lead and there's those that follow always going to have we need to we need to fix something in our community and it could be just as little as we need a stop sign there's going to be out of 10 people there's going to be four people i, I mean i'm being generous there's going to be four people that's going to be working every day to make sure that stop sign gets built Right. And then the other six is just going to be like, oh, well, I think we need it. I think we need it. I think we need it. But they're not going to do nothing. You know what I mean? Maybe one of them may come over and like, oh, wait, what do you need me to do? What? Hold this pole for a second. OK, I, I got five minutes. I'll hold the pole. Right. But it's going to be those main four people. Those are the people who have the vision that see like, yo, this is possible. This can happen. Right. And that's all in all communities, like in volunteer service. Hey, don't forget the people that's going to say we don't need no damn stop saying <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I, I'm trying to be positive here, but yes, you know, you got you gonna have that one Uncle Ruckus that is not gonna want the stop sign because you know they need to get hit because they shouldn't be crossing anyway. There's always gonna be that in any community. There's always gonna be that, and and it's our responsibility as people who know better, right, to do better and to to bring our brothers and sisters along with us. So when you say and when they say when Eric says that, like, yo, this underserved community is always there, like, yo, you just gotta do it. Like it's our responsibility to go in those boardrooms, to go in those places and make sure like, yo, listen, and if you ain't gonna make it, we're gonna make it. And and, and just not even talk about the, that one person that said we don't need a stop sign. Right. Just talk about the four people that's doing the work because that's, what, that's what's gonna drive the progress because Black Panther was a success and made that billions because Black Lives Matter, because all of the social justice work that was done to give us revitalize that sense of self in black people whereas they could say like oh now we have a rally point to come around so that, that's all i want to say right there i mean really you really touched on a lot i mean i know just looking at my journey there's always the people who focus on can't and you know where your attention goes that's where your energy goes and that's where you get your results um, I did have a question for Eric Dean Seaton, and you know I have to go back to you know my foundation. Um, for someone who is interested in being a writer, writing for the screen, um, for example, if they're used to academic writing or business writing, which is an entirely different style of writing, um, you know I've had people recommend books or recommend classes. What would you recommend to the person who has story or stories to tell and no foundation or basis because they didn't see the guy with the camera walking across campus? Um, movies or TV? Um, movies is simple. Uh, two books, How to Write a Movie in 21 Days and Save the Cat. Read those two books <laughs> and here's the trip. So when you do Save the Cat, you're going you're gonna to write. You're going to follow the notes of how they do it. And at some point, it's going to say, um, you, know, you, have to, you have to have this by page 10. And you're going to go, oh, I don't really need it by page 10. I'm going to do it by page 15. No, rewrite that movie until you until you do exactly what it says on every page. A friend of mine, his name's Glenn. He is a writer and he put, puts a lot of scripts, um, pilot scripts on this website you can get for free. Read some of those scripts, see what they were doing, write a pilot script. Get your final draft program. Uh, if you want to write for a show, write that script, an episode for that script, enter all those writing programs. Warner Bros. has a program, Disney has a program, Sony has a program, every one of those programs. Um, and then anytime you could follow any writers that you know on TV shows or movies or these different um, Zoom things that everybody's doing now and ask them questions and then get involved. Um, but the number one thing is write. Spend your time writing and rewriting and writing is rewriting. Um, and you can do it like, uh, yeah, you could absolutely find your way in, whether you have this background or not. And right now, I was typing the other day, I didn't realize that uh, in the original uh, Endgame, they, he, he didn't say, I am Iron Man. Right. And it was an editor, right. Right. when they were cutting the movie, said, you know what he should have said there, and they went back. So I typed online Endgame script to see what was in the script. Also, at the end of that movie, I, I finally realized, I've seen that movie so many times, I finally realized that Bucky knew Captain America wasn't gonna come back. They had a bunch of looks that they gave each other. If you watch that end scene again, he hugged him, and then his reaction was totally different than everybody else's. Uh, and then he saw him sitting there as an old person, and he started to walk away when they said he wasn't coming back. So I, was, I said, was that in the script, or is that something that they did? Um, and I typed in in-game script, and it came up online. 
So the, type of script, it'll come up. The, there's the PDF of it. Uh, everything ends up online. I think it's like Finland or Norway, like there was a lot of leaks because when these movies come out, they have to release the script, the rating system in uh, these other countries. So you oh, you should, you can find them like yeah. that. I have a friend who's a, he's a director and he does some stuff. And the last time I was at, at their house, he said, um, you write, you need to start writing because right now black is the new green. So my question to both of you is, what are your thoughts on that statement? You know, they used to say that it, it was the old statement whenever you made it in Hollywood, uh, they don't see black, they see green. Yes, I would say black is the new green. It's always been green, um, but now, so I think based off what Tim said, you have so many different streaming services, they've seen so many different things, they need to find something new. I don't think it's new, I think it's here to stay, but new, yes. And this was self-published, right? This thing, Harper was aware of this, and, and then they bought this one. That's the one they paid for. Now that I'm done with that book, this is the next book I'm doing. Okay. So it's all self-perpetuating. Where do I get your book, Tim? I want to read it. Yes. You can yeah. get it everywhere. You can buy an <laughs> item at Walmart. I, and I'm, right. I'm not joking. You can go to walmart.com, type right. in infinitum and Afrofuturist tale, and it will come up. That's that means you can buy infinitum and Afro And now, is that because of your publisher? That's it, and it has nothing to do with me. I, I don't have that kind of. I don't have that kind <laughs> and, of. And can I ask you how many other black uh, sci fi writers do they have on, in, in that house? I don't know. House? I'm still reeling to the fact that they got you <laughs> there, man. Not enough. Not enough. Yeah, you not enough. No. Not enough. But, like, yeah, okay, my book is Afrofuturism. And it's the first big one for a big five, you know, but you still have what John Jennings and, but then on the indie level, you got numerous, numerous black books. Many of them have been picked up. They're still indie, but they got picked up. I mean, black, it's coming. got picked yeah. up, you know what I mean? So, but those works are still, it's a vibrant black independent comics community. What Jason Reeves, you know, Greg uh, Elise, you know, all those folks are doing. And I feel more positive about it than I ever have because I just think these people are really, they're hustlers. And I think- In the positive sense. Their stuff bodes well, not for the film stuff that's gonna bode well for that, but it also bodes well for the publishing component. And I think that's gonna become more mature just over the next five years. I see that happen. There becomes a point, right? Where, you know, we obviously have black excellence on our show today with the products and the things that y'all do. But there comes a point when you know you get that that product from our community that's not black excellence, that's that's subpar, that's average. What's his name? Kenya Barris dealt with it in uh, his uh, Netflix show. You know, the, the thing was so bad and they asked him to be on a panel about black filmmakers and he was like, he didn't want to give his honest opinion because it was a bad film. So like, go, Mook Nito, go ahead. So what do you say to that? And I'll start with Mook Nito. Black, right now, at this moment, Black is the new green. It, it, all you have to do is go before George Floyd, go before, right before that, and go look at all the commercials that was that was had on TV. You know what I mean? All the little specials by the sports teams and all the things that's that happen. You can turn on TV right now. You're going to see more Black than you ever seen in your life. You know hey. what I mean? I'm in a commercial. Exactly. Tim wouldn't oh, be in a commercial on. before George Floyd. I would not no, have been in a no, commercial man. before come that. On, I guarantee it. Even if it's a there mixed is, couple, it's going to be a black person in there after that there, George Floyd. There, there is an awakening where I, I would say the difference is in this awakening is that now black people are being able to tell the stories about black people. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. We got, we got power out. now. They gave us some 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 air times the real air time not not what they want to see yeah. and we are taking advantage of it but it's so sad that it's we accepted what we had before for so long that that the pendulum is swinging but i feel like the great part about it is now we're they're asking us to tell our stories authentically where right. before they would just sprinkle in a black person or an asian person and it would just be not us telling the story and they would just be whitewashed um, now they're not being whitewashed. And even if white people are writing it, they're taking the time to invest and dig deeper to truly understand the Black, Asian, Hispanic, Indian, Native American, whatever the uh, 
perspective truly understand it when before they would just go oh i got it and then it's like no you don't got it so quick tim so what i'll say about that as well is that the, the yeah. tim and eric have always been doing their thing there's always been people that have always been putting us front and center with the work that they've been doing the fact that what is your frame of reference or what is the thing that is important to you like the fact that other people give you adulation to your community or the fact that you know yourself and you see yourself right because if you want it like when I started Afronauts, it was like, yo, I wanted to give exposure to people because people would always say there's no black heroes. There's no this, there's no that. And then I started going to cons and like researching. I was like, yo, there's a whole, I, I can't even keep up with all the material that's out there. You know what I'm saying?